So certainly the valuation paradigm is a little bit challenging because it is uncommon to see growth rate projections um, in a consumer staples category that look anything like the cannabis industry. Um, what you're taking is a $7 billion illicit market and over time, you know, converting that to legal sales. Um, that's not going to happen in a straight line, but it does suggest that you're going to see very strong double and triple digit compound annual growth rates over the next five years. So from a valuation standpoint, we think that has to be factored into the methodology. So what we've opted to do is use an enterprise value to forward sales multiple and then apply a factor to account for that sales growth. Mm -hmm. So when you say a $7 billion illicit market currently, that means just use of marijuana as opposed to it being used as an ingredient in, say, a beauty cream or a soda or, or things like that. So, I mean, that $7 billion market may be a static number right now, but we're not accounting for in that $7 billion number all the other end uses potentially for cannabis and its derivatives. Oh, certainly. Really, that $7 billion um, illicit or black market really only addresses um, one of four, if not five, verticals. You know, that's really what we consider to be um, the adult use segment, so a substitute social lubricant for alcohol. But to your point, there's another vertical that would be, you know, beauty and nutraceuticals. Then you, of course, have OTC pain and sleep. So think about replacing Johnson & Johnson's Tylenol or Procter & Gamble's Zequil. There's, you know, a huge pharmaceutical element um, um, to this industry and then animal health as well. So if it's going to be used as a replacement, let's say, for, for aspirin or ibuprofen or something like that, I mean, from a pharmaceutical standpoint, there is, there's a push-pull to that, right? And so they may benefit because there may be new products, but may, they may also in the process lose because it's replacing other products currently on the market. So is the best way at the end of the day really to be invested in the suppliers of the actual ingredient? Uh, yeah, and in Canada right now, all the suppliers are vertically integrated. That's a function of, you know, the historical regulatory framework. So a company like Canopy Growth or a company like Tilray, they're cultivating the cannabis, they're processing it, they're either selling it as a whole flower or pre-rolled joint, or over time, they'll be um, extracting the distillate and then applying that to other form factors. And then, of course, layering on intellectual property um, that'll be driven by clinical trials to really make a true pharmaceutical um, use case for those products. Vivian, I know you cover Canby Growth, Tilray, Constellation Brands. You have an outperform on all three. If I'm an investor and I want to know which one is really going to give me the best bang for my buck, how do I differentiate between the companies as I begin to learn the fundamentals of this relatively new market? Certainly. So Constellation Brands is our top pick overall across my coverage universe. It's a best-in-class uh, beer company selling uh, Corona and Modelo in the United States, where you also have a really nice cannabis option for upside. Uh, in terms of pure play cannabis stocks, um, um, Canopy Growth is our top pick.